Hello, hello, more Dimers here and welcome to the fifth round of Tata Steel 2021 chess tournament Vegensy in Netherlands. Now, I would like to show you the game, the only decisive game of the round five. And we didn't have uh, fireworks, uh, six games ended with the draws and this is the only decisive game. So we have Nils Grandelius, who was a sole leader after first two rounds. Um, Nils Grandelius lost one game to Pentala Hare Krishna then had one draw and um, so he was the co-leader for the moment so this is the this is the fifth round that he has to prove maybe something if he's prepared for this tournament or maybe not and uh, we have also Maxime Vachiel Lagrave who's gonna play with the black pieces and he's going to uh, play uh, sorry for the spoiler his favorite Nidorf in Sicilian defense so usually when we see a Nidorf especially the best specialist uh, in the world of Nidorf, Maxime Vachel Lagraf, we can expect something, uh, something really, really exciting. And indeed, that's happened. Nils Garandelius with the white pieces open, of course, with the E4. We have C5, so Sicilian defense. And of course, nothing fancy here. We know that already. We've seen that uh, plenty of times on my channel. Uh, so just enjoy. And now we have a6, so Nidorf variation. Bishop e3, of course, is the main line, but both of the players um, knows uh, Bishop g5. Nils Grandelius played that before. Uh, also, we can expect Maxim Vachel Lagraf to play all the variations. So um, we have e6 and now f4, a main idea. And here here we have queen b6, which is called the poison pawn variation. And you can already uh, imagine why it's called this way. This pawn is under attack. What to do? Of course, we can play something like knight b3. It's a pretty natural move. Um, however, it's not about, you know, playing the poison pawn variation uh, without, uh, you know, allowing an um, opponent to take that pawn. And this indeed is what um, Nils Grandelius played. So we have a queen d2. This is the main line of the poison pawn variation. So obviously, a uh, queen b2 uh, is played so the pawn was taken and what now uh, just for your information this line was played by Gary Kasparov himself and his uh, prime time so uh, definitely this is you know very well known line especially now with all of this you know um, the computers uh, preparation so definitely we're gonna see uh, who prepared better for for this line the rook is under attack and um, the knight was under attack but because of the queen d2 was defended so rook b1 is an obvious choice and the queen has only one move queen a3 uh, and now there are two lines here we can play e5 which is select Slightly more popular, but it's uh, pretty okay for black actually. Uh, and uh, f5, e5, uh, it's quite sharp and it shatters the pawn structure of black completely. But white also have uh, the problems with the with the king. So for example, here h6, bishop h4, and only then d takes on e5, f takes on e5, and then g5. And after exchanging, as you already see, no, this pawn structure is not ideal. Uh, but white also have this advanced pawn. Can it even survive over there? This this line is a, is a very, very sharp. However, we have f5, Nils Grandelius prefers to play this way and now the main line is knight c6 however the biggest specialists of Nidorf um, like Maxim Vachel Lagrave, Jan Nepomniachi uh, they prefer to play bishop e7 and castle as fast as possible there is a one problem because now um, after f takes on e6 uh, bishop e6 uh, already we see that this pawn is under attack so it's extremely sharp uh, knight e6 f takes on e6 white doesn't take this pawn but rather play bishop c4 both of the players know this line and maxim vachel lagraf played that couple of times so we have two pawns under attack. We have this on b7 and of course uh, e6. So there is no rush here. And I would like to show you the picture from the tournament and um, in the link in the description. Also, uh, if you want to see more pictures um, from the official website and um, so enjoy it for a while. 
Uh, and here, the main idea here actually is knight b to d7 allowing to take this this pawn which is not recommended because first what white want to do here is actually stop black from making a castle so the bishop controls g8 that is the main idea knight c5 now so the knight attacking the pawn uh, central pawn on e4 that's the one thing the most important this bishop has to be moved somewhere and now how to play we have couple of games in the main database like uh, available for everyone where bishop f5 was played uh, fabiano caruana against maxim vashilagraf uh, played bishop c4 so he wanted to preserve the bishop on this diagonal and not let black actually to castle so this is the obvious plan uh, bishop f5 it's it's moving from this diagonal so what usually black do, does here is is g6 bishop h3 um, and after knight c2 e4 black stands really 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 great knight e4 uh, knight e4 yes there is something like queen d4 double attack on the rook on the on the knight however black can answer simply with the queen c3 with the check exchanging the the queens and so on so these lines are pretty much um, known uh, but it's pretty okay for black there is no risk it's it's actually black has one extra pawn and it's and it's pretty good here uh, bishop c4 played by fabiano caruana is a little bit more more challenging however b5 seems like like pretty good here and we have one game where Taimur Rajabov only one game in the database where Taimur Rajabov against Jan Nepomniacci actually said okay I don't care about this bishop and he simply castles so what just happened was b takes on c4 and then after bishop f6 bishop f6 queen d6 the game ended with the draw maybe that's gonna be a surprise it's ended with the draw but look at this the queen controlling all of the squares uh, the rook is ready to infiltrate the, the the b file maybe b8 the king is still in the center uh pretty much very very insane game the knight can jump in the right moment into d5 uh, if it's not taken now but uh, i'm not gonna show you that game uh, let's back Niels Grandelius didn't go for bishop f5, didn't go for bishop c4, uh, too crazy? Maybe. Niels Grandelius went for bishop b3. So he still stays on this um, diagonal. Uh, but now the queen, for example, cannot uh, look at the knight. So if the, the rook, for example, come to c8, uh, it's not like, you know, direct threat to, to attack the, the knight on the c3, which is important in some of the lines. So just, just one idea. Rook c8 indeed was played by Maxime Vachel Lagraf, uh, and now we have the castle. Uh, and here, as uh, this bishop is still very dangerous, and Maxime Vachel Lagraf obviously want to castle by himself, uh, then he exchanges change his beautiful place knight okay this knight is watching on the on the e4 pawn and that was the main purpose uh, for this knight however this bishop looks like you know taking it looks like very very tempting uh, it could potentially uh, fix the pawn structure however after knight b3 we have rook b3 we cannot of course take with the with any of the pawns because however you take it doesn't really matter if you take with this one you have always queen c5 winning the knight so you just have to be aware that that in this position it's not possible rook b3 was actually forced uh, and now the queen has to move somewhere we have queen c5 with check but it's not with the tempo because first bishop comes to e3 attacking the queen queen c4 and now we have rook f4 this position maybe was not rich in the in the tournaments in the big tournaments uh, played by the grandmasters however if you make the preparation against you know the specialist of nidorf 
And if you want to enter to the lion's den, then of course no, you have to be really, really prepared. And this is what Niels Grandelius uh, actually did. He checked a lot of games, played mostly correspondence games. And now nowadays, you know, correspondence games are on the top level. Everybody used the engines for the correspondence game. So you have to be really, really well prepared. Uh, and this Rook F4, uh, it's a very, very uh, important move because now Black have to decide what to do. And in the analysis, after the game analysis, Nils Grandelius um, asked Maxime Vachelagraf that why he didn't play Knight H5 is the well-known move at least in the correspondence games. And Maxim Vachelagraf seems that um, he knew the idea. He was thinking about that, but he was um, afraid that he has to make the two moves with the knight. So that can be too slow and his king is still in the center. So what could happen? Knight h5, and now the rook can uh, can move wherever it has to move somewhere. Any of these moves is is good. Any of these moves have actually has some um, advantages, disadvantages. Rook f5, let's say, attacking directly the the knight. Knight goes back to the f6, and we could have potentially threefold repetition here. Uh, what else could happen if um, White, for example, takes on b7? Then of course it's not possible because the knight is hanging so that's not even possible if the knight uh, moves somewhere then also there is the battery pointing at c2 this pawn is hanging so it's not that easy probably something like a4 and then black castle and the game continues uh, with the equal material with the probably equal uh, possibilities of, of, of playing. So this was the main line which Niels Grandelius actually prepared. However, Maxime Vachelagraf decided that this is too dangerous and he decided that, okay, this is time where I can give up my pawn and at least I can get some, um, still some activity and maybe counterplay. And he played queen e6. Uh, of course, we have rook b7. And now we have the castle. And here Niels Grandelius told for 36 minutes. He is pawn up. He has better position. And now he has to make some move. But he doesn't have any forcing win here. Like, you know, obvious moves. Um, how to continue the game. Uh, look, for example, this pawn is attacked twice. Uh, there are a lot of things going on the, on the board. You cannot just, you know, move the, move the knight immediately. Uh, you have to make some preparation. In some point this this move will be possible uh, so what Niels Grandelius did what would you play after 36 minutes of thinking Niels Grandelius went for h3 h3 uh, making a space for the king potentially uh, the king gonna be extremely safe on h2 as white still have the for example a dark square bishop uh, everything what white has to do is control uh, these squares because of course this is is a little bit an obstacle for for black definitely backward pawns and uh, this is the this is the weakness uh, first this rook this rook is really annoying so uh maxime vachel lagraf want to exchange that rook uh, but nils grandelius said ho 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 i don't want to exchange it on, on b8 then you would have the rook on the on the open file that's not fair so let's first move to rook a7 we have rook a8 and now he said that, okay, now it's time um, to exchange the rooks. Now your rook is on a8 and what is important here is a geometry of the board because now we have knight d5. Now what is the idea? What is the difference? It looks like this pawn is under attack. So um, what would happen? Knight e4 actually can be met with extremely strong. You can actually pause the video and it, it was not played in the, in the game. But what would you play in in this position as white uh, win this game while I enjoy my cup of tea okay ready the forcing move uh, there are a couple of uh, of moves you can play of course something like queen d3 queen d4 however this wins on the spot look at this knight e7 Knight e7 with the check and now if we have a queen e7 then 
queen d5 with the check wins the game. The rook on a8 is hanging. So that was the reason where Nils Grandelius actually wanted to exchange not on b8 but on a8. So huge difference. And also, of course, the knight is under attack twice. So uh, even if that this rook is on b8, it's still, you know, uh, possible to make that. Uh, this is why we have rook b8 first. Of course, the pawn cannot be taken. Uh, and now we have c4. And for the same reason, uh, if the knight takes, we're gonna have the same uh, continuation just we're not gonna win the rook and deliver the checkmate but but rather we're gonna simply win the knight so of course this also would be enough to win the game uh, so here as the bishop is under attack bishop d8 the problem is that the bishop now is an obstacle for the for the rook and the rook um, doesn't cover the eight rank so that's the that's the difference what else could be played the engine recommends knight d5 as the strongest move it's like counterintuitive because it actually connects the the white pawns what could happen here maybe e takes on d5 uh, and the game could continue uh, this is the backward pawn, so it's not that strong as it look like, uh, that connecting this pawn is like obviously better for white, it's still white have to take care of that pawn. Of course, it's, you know, still pawn is the pawn, uh, but, you know, this is the, the backward pawns. Uh, however, as I said, we have bishop d8 and now queen f2, beautiful move, setting up the battery um, on, uh, on, the, on the f file. Uh, we have knight d7 now, uh, a lot of things happening knight d7 the knight is covering f8 now making a space for the bishop so the bishop can be can be developed this way so now uh, black doesn't have you know much space to coordinate the pieces but uh, this is how maxim vashella graf tries to do that we have bishop d4 beautiful move uh, pointing at g7 now and now as planned bishop g5 attacking the rook and making the eight rank great again we have rook f5 attacking the bishop bishop h6 now um, defending g7 a little bit passive for for the bishop uh, however look at the white pieces this battery the rook and the queen perfectly uh, placed the bishop pointing on g7 perfectly placed finally the knight in any moment can jump deliver some check uh, it's extremely dangerous piece so how would you improve this position as white Nils Grandelius taught for a while and he played king h2 he says my pieces are perfectly placed and if you want you can even take the pawn on e4 I don't care what would happen if uh, Maxim Vashella Graf takes that pawn well rook f7 is extremely strong because now this uh, knight is under attack so the knight has to move somewhere if the knight moves for example to e5 it looks pretty attractive it's uh, you know covering this diagonal blocking uh, however there is knight e7 and now uh, not much you can do you're gonna get checkmated so that would be terrible mistake if knight f6 now uh, blocking the line of sight so the rook is under attack the rook can simply take on f6 and of course uh win the queen so that's also not possible rook f8 this looks promising because if the if the knight is taken then the queen is taken the problem is again knight e7 first and now if the king uh, moves then we're gonna have the checkmate so queen e7 is forced and after rook e7 uh, rook f2 bishop f2 at the end white have extra exchange and probably win the game uh, definitely wins the game because this pawn's gonna be the victims of the of the rage of the rook and uh, gonna win the game uh, and finally rook d8 defending um, this knight is also possible but again knight e7 wins the game here king h8 and then g4 g5 
uh, and if the bishop is moved then of course we're gonna have the checkmate on g7 uh, if something like knight f6 let's say so let me just show you white even can here sacrifice the queen because why not uh, and only then play bishop f6 uh, and after bishop g7 boom that would be the very similar checkmate i just i just show you without this g5 move so this way or another we would have um, the checkmate because because this bishop is the is the beast on the longest diagonal so um, this is why we have rook c8 now going after c4 pawn but Nils Grandelius said okay you can take my pawn uh, and he played queen g3 and it looks like very very suspicious would would you take this pawn it's a very nice trap the Nils Grandelius is extremely tricky a tricky player uh, if rook c4 then we're gonna have queen b3 and this this queen now attacking the rook what to do it doesn't really matter what you're gonna play next uh, you don't have any checks so that was very smart to move the, the king to h2 uh, you have to move wherever but it doesn't really matter because now the knight can jump to e7 deliver the check and keep in mind that the queen actually is pinned so black cannot take the knight so that was a very very nice trap um, after wherever the king moves it doesn't really matter we're gonna have the checkmate queen e8 and the checkmate in couple of moves here the five moves so that's the first thing if we play something like rook f8 which seems as the best um, the best move in the position however the problem is what white gonna do is just exchange the pieces uh, and then play something like e5 uh, d takes on e5 uh, bishop e5 and white gonna have the passed pawn and gonna play for this passed pawn it's very very solid continuation that doesn't need to you know white doesn't need to play for for the checkmate so we have g6 now attacking the, the rook and here another beautiful move by Niels Grandelius he calculate really precisely uh, and he played the queen h4 not only attacking the bishop but also covering e7 so for example if the queen uh happens to to finish on the f5 in the in the some moment the knight gonna jump to e7 deliver the check uh attack the queen but also the rook is now under attack so it's an extremely complicated position now queen h4 very nice uh, if the rook is taken what would happen here first it takes on f5 the queen has to be moved again there are no checks to the king the king is on the h2 is in a really good uh, place uh probably the the queen would go to the e8 and then knight e7 with the check king f7 uh, and then knight c8 a uh, queen c8 queen h6 so uh the material uh as you see is not equal two extra pawns for white uh, and also now this pawn is under attack and black has no chances here there are completely no chances here so um uh, cannot take the rook very precise calculation bishop g7 moving the bishop the bishop is under attack uh what could happen um queen e7 now queen e7 is extremely strong uh because there is the checkmate on g7 so not much choice here what would have to be played here is just exchanging the queens and just go to the end game and this end game of course is still much better for white bishop g7 with the check uh, e takes on f5 this pawn gonna uh, protect the pawn on the f5 and with two extra pawns of course it's still winning for white so it's not possible this is why we have bishop f8 still keeping an eye on g7 still keeping an eye on e7 so the knight cannot jump there it's it's now covered by the queen and the and the bishop uh, but now we have rook f6 another crazy crazy move uh, Nils Grandelius saying hey you didn't want to take exchange now take it now you are forced to take it uh, but what would happen if knight f6 the problem is that after knight f6 king f7 queen h7 is possible to play and now after bishop g7 which is only move knight g4 first so the bishop is attacked twice 
Uh, it has to be defended, uh, but now we're gonna have knight h6 with the attack on the on the king, with the attack on the rook. Uh, so of course can take the, back the material. But the point is, what white to want to do in this position is just exchange everything and get the um, pawn end game with extra two pawns. Uh, how to do that? Very easy. Bishop g7. We are forced to take with the rook, rook g7, and now queen h8. And now. Now this knight covers both of these squares, so if the king is moved, uh, then of course the rook is hanging, so a rook g8 is forced and, and then simply just exchange everything and white gonna win with two extra pawns. These pawns cannot do anything, they are all isolated and white gonna have two extra pawns and win the game with ease. So that's why we have queen e8. Maxim Vashelagraf want to keep as many pieces as possible, uh, but now Nils Grandelius finally said, "Okay, you don't, you didn't want my um, you know exchange sacrifice twice. Now I'm gonna start it, and you have to take it. Uh, otherwise, I'm gonna take your queen, so you don't have a choice. Uh, how to take it? If you take with the knight, we of course gonna have a beautiful fork, so that's not possible. Uh, if takes with the with the king, the problem is queen h6 with the check, and after king f7, queen g7 first, and that's of course gonna be a checkmate. That's gonna be a checkmate or not? Of course, not gonna be a checkmate. How would you checkmate in one move in this position? There is a checkmate in one move. Uh, I hope you see that. Knight f4, this is the checkmate. Uh, so after rook f8, uh, Maxime Vachelagrav was forced to take with the, with the queen, but now we have knight e7 with the check, uh, with taking the rook, so exchanging all the pieces anyway. This way or another, there was um, that there was no way for Maxim Vachelagraf uh, to actually avoid all of these exchanges. We have king f7, and now after knight c8, Maxim Vachelagraf resigned. And he resigned because he is forced to take the, the knight, then he's gonna lose another pawn, that's the first thing. And now where to move the king? You definitely don't want to move the king to the, to the square like this one. Uh, anyway, it doesn't really matter where you go. You probably want to uh, escape with the king. The problem is you're gonna lose the pawn. You're gonna lose the pawn and then if you're gonna try to run, still run, you're gonna lose another pawn. And even if black takes one pawn, then this pawn, of course, gonna win the game. Uh, or some even mating ideas and, and so on. So uh, white gonna force to exchange everything and these two pawns gonna gonna win the game. So this is why after knight c8, Maxim Vachel Lagraf resigned. Shocking, shocking. Nils Grandelius, really great preparation. Uh, Maxim Vachel Lagraf, no, make mistake, make mistake in his favorite opening. He's an expert here and uh, he already lost one of the games against Fabiano Caruana. Definitely he was prepared for this bishop c4 but bishop b3 was something new and then this rook f4 it was played in some correspondence game so um definitely maxim vachela graf i know should be better prepared but this was nils grandelius uh, who had definitely much easier uh because he was preparing he knew what maxim vachela graf want to uh, want to play so maybe he maybe that was easier this is also the risk of playing the same and the same same uh, openings but at the same time you are expert in that so you know this is you know double edge always and then yeah that's all for today if you like this video press like it for some reason you don't like it press unlike and if you don't want to miss other games from tata steel a tournament press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one